I'm also Britton. I'm here with the Canadian Clay and Glass Gallery, and today I'm going to teach you the basics of working with clay. So when working with clay, there's two pretty important rules we want to keep in mind. One is anytime we attach two pieces of clay together, we are going to scratch both sides, um, also known as scoring, and we're going to apply water to ensure that these stick together after the clay dries. So scratch before you attach. Rhymes really easy to remember. The other thing we need to keep in mind is no introducing air bubbles to the clay. This is poking holes in it and sealing it over, but this also includes squishing extra little scraps together. Um, air bubbles can cause explosions in the kiln as well as cracking issues, so we don't want to do that. Uh, this is called slab building, so what I'm doing is I am using a rolling pin to um, spread the clay out into a slab. I wouldn't go thinner than about a quarter inch on this or it gets pretty fragile. You're also able to add texture to slabs. Um, I'm using lace here to do it. If you have stamps, those work well, shells, kind of anything you want. This is coil building, so what I'm doing is taking small pieces of clay and rolling them out into coils. Uh, you can end up building with these if you'd like to create forms with volume, but we're just going to have to remember to scratch both sides and add water before we attach. Uh, when rolling out coils, you want to get as much surface area covered as you can with your hands, so keep your fingers spread as you roll and always roll on a porous surface. Anytime you're working with clay, we want to make sure we're not working on um, plastic or the clay will just stick to it. We want to make sure it's porous so it will release. So you can see here I'm just making sure I've got everything nice and scratched so that when I attach it, it will stick together and I won't have any cracking or falling apart um, as the piece dries or once the piece is fired. Here I'm gonna be making a pinch pot. So I am starting by uh, kind of balling the clay between my hands into a sphere and then inserting my thumb in the middle and using my other fingers to go around the edge and pinch it thinner. Um, so I'm moving the clay upward and outward while I pinch to make a nice little bowl. You can see here, this is a finished one, so we have a nice round bowl that's pretty thin. Uh, so here's some things you can use around the house. Um, this is actually like plastic wrap from around fruit. You can use old fabric. They're great for adding texture to your pieces. Also, if you don't have a nice wood rolling pin, um, any kind of round surface would work, but if you're using something, again, that is not porous, cover it with cornstarch or it will stick. Uh, so here's some of the underglazes we're gonna be using while working here. Uh, so from left to right, you can see there's one coat, two coats, and three coats of the underglaze. One thing to keep in mind is that this underglaze does change color from when it's in the tube to when it's fired out of the kiln. So what I'm showing you here is the dark blue. It looks about the same color as the clay, it looks gray. Um, but it will fire to dark blue, so just keep that in mind when painting. 